Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. As I watch the parts that have been returned from my engineers, I'd like to apologise if the video seems a little out of sync or has different grades of quality. Without knowing, my camera stopped recording during the original build, so parts of this video have since been recorded after putting 100 kilometers on the new top end and modified cylinder components. Anyway, as usual, I hope this is informative enough for those people looking to improve the performance of their bikes. When the bike was new to me, one of the first videos I uploaded to YouTube was a compression test video. I do this to get a feel for the condition of the engine. I found when the engine was cold, it was creating around 90 psi. I did some research on the internet and found this was a little on the low side, so for peace of mind, I decided to replace the top end components of the engine. The detailed top end rebuild is a three part series that can be found on my channel. I invite you to watch that if you have the time. Before any headwork was done, the top end rebuild took the compression from around 90 psi to 100 psi and the piston squish remained the same at around 1.7. My top end rebuild series shows this. I was not satisfied with the marginal gains and as I'm chasing a bit more performance, I decided to improve the piston squish on the engine. So here's how I did it. The internet forum suggests the piston squish of around 0.8 millimeters is optimal for performance on these engines. However, I'm seeking a good balance between performance and reliability without pushing too hard and risk sacrificing reliability. So this is take two, and quick note to self, make sure the camera is actually recording when you're making a video. So to improve the piston squish on this engine, me and the engineers decided that we should remove 0.5 mil from this surface of the combustion chamber. By removing 0.5 mil, we've now got this um, internal surface here closer to the head of the piston. 0.5 mil has given me a piston squish of around 1.2 now, which is much improved of the 1.7. I'll insert the maths here. Now, if you can imagine by removing 0.5 mil from here, basically the entire unit is now half a mil thinner. And there's quite a precise fit of this rubber O-ring sits on top here that fits inside the cylinder head or you, the water jacket, whatever you want to call it. So this O-ring sits in here. And if you can imagine, if you drop this 0.5 mil, um, the rubber O-ring isn't going to fit properly and you risk water spraying out. So the engineers decided that we should also drop uh, skim this surface an equal amount of 0.5 mil so that everything still fits correctly. So just in summary, as I'm talking in circles, you drop this half a mil by skimming this face. You also need to drop this surface half a mil so that the O-ring fits tight as it should. Now, as this is take two, I can confirm that this method has worked. Um, I've done about 100 Ks on this. You can see by the top of the piston in this, and it's worked really, really well. Um, so, with that said, I understand that this isn't the traditional way of doing things. Generally, what people do is remove the cylinder and they skim the required amount off the base of the cylinder. What this can do if you remove too much material in extreme cases, it can alter the port timing. Um, so as you may know, as the piston moves up and down, it bypasses the fixed ports that are in the cylinder. By removing too much and you alter the port timing, you can actually lose power because the timing's off. This was enough for me to choose this option, rather do the head work and not risk having to report the barrel as well as skimming it. Um, also by removing 0.5 mil, um, if this had a negative effect on the engine, 
What I could do is use different base gaskets. So this Pro-X kit comes with three base gaskets. Again, I'm using the 0.3 gasket, which is the thinnest that comes in the pack. But if I'm not happy with the results of removing half a mil, I can use the 0.5 gasket or the 0.8 mil gasket and then reverse, effectively reverse the effects of skimming the head. It's kind of a, a, a bit of a, a safe option for me to just trial until I'm happy with the results. But I can confirm by skimming this section half a mil, achieving a squish of 1.2 across the piston there, has woke the bike up. Um, throughout the rev range, it, it has a bit more power and it also starts a lot easier. Now, if I was to have my time again, um, I probably wouldn't have skimmed this and this. What I would have done is probably um, bought the VHM kits. Um, if you were to do your own research here, VHM, they make performance combustion chamber inserts where, you know, with some engineering, you can actually achieve the performance of a, of a piston squish of around 1.8. It actually works on the internal area here um, in CCs. The, um, again, you'll have to do your own research, but rather than alter the original components, I would probably have gone with a VHM cylinder head and then a different combustion chamber insert to achieve a bit better performance. Again, I invite you to do your own research on that, but there are the three options you can do. The thing that I've done, skimming the top of this and altering this, you know, you can skim the base. Number two, you can skim the base of the cylinder. Um, that may require port timing as well. And then your third option could be the VHM performance parts that replace these. So I hope that helps in summary and I haven't spoken circles too much. So I'll get on with the video. So now we're back to the original film footage. Um, you can see that I'm skipping through um, large chunks of work here just because I've already captured this in my three part top end video series. I'm leaving in just enough information here so you can see what I'm doing. Thank <laughs> you. 